In the comments for the final part of my Nightmare House playthrough, user Antispiral115 suggested that I make a video on my biggest phobias in gaming. I thought it was a really good idea, but at first I was hesitant. What would make the list? Sure, there's things like the anticipation of jump scares and unkillable enemies, but that all seems far too obvious to warrant making a whole video on. Having taken some time to think about it, though, and having played a few horror games in the meantime, I think I've got a pretty good list of the more subtle things in gaming that get me even more than the overt scares. These are my four biggest phobias in gaming. Number one, water. This one is somewhat multifaceted. What kind of spook you're going to get from this seems to depend on just how deeply immersed you are in the stuff. One of my least favorite examples of this happens in Outlast, where at one point you'll find yourself in a massive dark room, relentlessly pursued by an escaped mental patient, all while you're up to your waist in sewer water. What makes this scene so scary is that neither of you can see each other. The large size and openness of the room means that even with your camera's night vision, you'll only be able to see things when they're just a few feet away from you. If he should manage to get close to you, the first thing you'll see is the glow of his eyes, followed shortly after by the man himself. Both you and this enemy are navigating mostly by sound, with you trying to gauge his distance from you by the clanging of the chains on his wrists, and he hunting you down by the sound of you sloshing through the water, only calling more attention to yourself the more desperately you try to get away. It's essentially the most terrifying game of Marco Polo in history. It doesn't have to be dark for this to work. Entering a partially flooded room will immediately set off alarm bells in the minds of most gamers. As you wade through, you'll probably be well aware that anything can be hiding beneath the surface. And if something were to suddenly burst out and attack you, well, what are you going to do about it? As with the Outlast example mentioned before, games that have you walk through water will almost certainly slow your movement significantly. If it's a game where you're not able to fight, or if you need more distance to effectively do so, trying to run away will be a strong emulation of a nightmare, as you try to run for dry land in agonizingly slow motion. Even games that don't cash in on an enemy encounter will know that you know to expect a jump scare, such as this one early on in Resident Evil 7. Cry of Fear even pushes this beyond what should be expected, by having an enemy type that suddenly emerges from water that's just ankle high. The extreme version of this is total submersion, although this is fairly rare in games. The most relevant example is probably Subnautica, though it at first looks like a vibrant and lively game. Venture beyond the safe shallows, and you'll find that this ocean is deep. Very deep. So deep that light can't always reach you. And though you look around and see nothing, yourself suspended in a seemingly endless void, you know you're not alone. Far from it. As you may hear the distant vocalizations of huge unseen creatures. And much like the Outlast example, you won't see them until they're close enough to see you. Number two, long hallways. This is probably one of the most common tropes in horror games, but it ends up being worth a mention because there are a number of directions the setup can take, and knowing this does much more for me than whatever it actually ends up being. As they approach such a hallway, experienced gamers will certainly realize it's a setup for a scare, but what will it be? Usually it's something simple, like a jump scare when something crashes through a window, like in Resident Evil. Other times, you may get partway down the hall when something enters and starts chasing you, forcing you to sprint for the exit. Sometimes, developers will get a little more creative with it. I came across an interesting example recently in my Cry of Fear playthrough, 
where you navigate a long and twisting corridor until eventually, you come upon a segment where the solid floor gives way to a metal grate. Continue on, as if you have a choice, and hundreds of hands will reach up, clawing at you and causing damage. There's still a long way to go when this starts, and there's nothing you can do but frantically dash for the exit, hoping the hallway runs out before your health does. Sometimes it's a simple jump scare, sometimes it's a chase, and sometimes it's just to build tension for whatever comes next. But in the rare event that you actually make it to the end of such a corridor, and the trip passes on eventfully, but you find that the door is locked, God help you for what's about to happen when you turn around. Number 3. Oddly lifelike sound effects. This one isn't as common as the previous two, but if done right, it's easily one of the most unnerving. As anyone who has listened to my narration can tell you, I know very little about sound design. I honestly couldn't tell you what exactly causes the distinction I'm about to draw, but I certainly know it when I hear it. Video game sound effects, for the most part, sound like just that, sound effects. But occasionally, I'll come across sounds that, for whatever reason, are just... different. In my Nightmare House playthrough, I was really spooked by a scare that involved a zombie tapping on some glass just off-screen. Hello? Hi. Partly because I almost wasn't sure if the sound came from the game at all. There was something about it that, when played through headphones, actually got me to glance to my right, as if responding to a real sound. As a result, this scare ended up affecting me probably more than it was even supposed to. Another example can be found in the apartments in Cry of Fear. Approach a certain door, and you'll hear this. I don't have a whole lot to say about this one, if only because I don't really have the prerequisite knowledge to comment on what makes this work. In some cases, such as in the glass tapping example, I think it has something to do with the sound being highly directional. It definitely adds an extra level of immersion if a sound can get you to turn around in real life. The earliest example I'm aware of is in the beginning of Silent Hill 2. As you walk the forest path into town, you'll occasionally hear what sounds like another set of footsteps shuffling through the leaves only to stop as soon as you do. In Condemned Criminal Origins, you'll sometimes hear realistic sounds of muffled movement in another room, or the floor above. When playing a video game, there's always a degree of separation between the player and character, a level of detachment from what's happening on screen. I believe sound design such as this can trigger a real fight-or-flight response in the player, shortening that gap and bringing a level of immersion that just isn't possible through visuals alone. Number 4. Nothing. Oddly enough, one of the most effective ways for a game to induce uneasiness in a player is to do absolutely nothing. Obviously a period of silence is great for building tension, but I'm talking about when it doesn't lead to any kind of payoff. The emptiness is the scare. This is actually used in most horror games, but rarely gets more than a passing mention. In the previously noted Silent Hill 2 example, nothing ever comes out of the woods to attack you. You'll hear the footsteps behind you, turn around, and there will be nothing there. It happens repeatedly, and after a while, you make it into town and the game begins. What was stalking you? Were you really even being stalked at all? You never find out, and I find that so much creepier than any reveal the game could have come up with. The unnerving power of nothing is so strong, in fact, that this can easily apply even in non-horror settings. Many, many players report feeling anxious while wandering empty multiplayer maps. I personally get this a lot in games like Gary's Mod or Halo. I touched upon this in my Source Games video last year, but to sum it up, 
If you have memories of playing on a map, you probably associate it with activity and memories of fun times. Coming back years later, finding it empty and silent, save for the ambient sounds and your own footsteps, you almost feel like you're not really alone. Speaking of the Source Games video, recently many of you commented saying you felt a similar sensation in Minecraft. At first, this seems to go against what I said previously. The world of Minecraft is full of NPCs, with monsters, animals, and even friendly villagers. However, I've played a lot of Minecraft, and I can't pretend I don't know exactly what you're talking about. Sure, there are monsters, but there's not much to them besides walking forward and hitting you. The animals are dumb as rocks, as are the villagers who speak only in grunts. In other words, the world's not empty, but it sure feels like it is. For me, in some ways, having such simple NPCs around can be even worse than having none at all. It's like living in a town populated entirely by Chuck E. Cheese animatronics that have been placed about. There may be movement, sure, but there's obviously no living activity here. To share a Minecraft anecdote, about a week ago I was alone on a server I'd been running with my cousin for the past eight years. We had decided that it might be cool to incorporate back rooms, a seemingly endless labyrinth of bland, empty rooms that are easy to get lost in and are meant to invoke this very feeling. The back rooms on this server are hard to find, only accessible if you make your way into the maintenance hallway of the mall and happen upon an inconspicuous door nestled in a corner. Open it and take the ladder down, and you'll be there. It's a big project, not helped by the fact that it's underground, so each room has to be excavated before it can be built. In the beginning of construction, I felt fine. But now that it's reached a certain size, progress is slowed because I just can't stand to be alone down there for long periods of time anymore. In fact, the reason I recorded some of this footage in the first place is because while building, I could swear I could hear some faint but weird sounds I'd never heard before. I never heard them again once the recording started. At times, I could swear I'd see a player rounding a corner in the distance, and I kept turning around in real life after feeling someone looking over my shoulder. I've played many horror games, many of which have gotten me quite tense, but this has just been something else, and proof that perhaps the best way to create a truly scary game is not through having the ugliest enemies or most unexpected jump scares, but knowing how best to stimulate the imaginations of the players themselves. So these are the things that affect me the most, but all of this is highly subjective and I'm sure there are plenty of other things I could have talked about. Let me know in the comments, what are your phobias in gaming?